Hello good people. Today is a different day. It's a sad day for me because I have to talk about loss and grief. Death is not easy because it separates us from our loved ones and confines them to the grave. So physically we are not able to see them. Depending on your religious affiliation, death happens when the spirit leaves the soul. Awaiting the resurrection day when Jesus comes to take the faithful one home to live eternally. And so we are sad when death happens because we are not very sure we will ever meet the person again. In African setting, a person never really dies. But their soul still hovers around and they can commune with the living. That is why when death occurs, people are so cautious on how they deal with the dead. They ensure they give them the most befitting send-off as possible. Others say it's their last wedding. Actually, a lot of respect is given to the dead. So a neighbor has passed on. She has been ill for some time. And unfortunately, she died on that fateful night when it rained so heavily. Actually, it was eight straight hours. And if you have ever lived in a place where there is black cotton soil, you need to understand what I'm talking about. Communication can be terrible. It can be very difficult to access even medication. So as neighbors, we traveled to Kilifi County to attend the burial using the standard gauge railway. I know some of you are asking uh, who is a neighbor and I want to take it from this perspective. When Jesus was asked who is my neighbor, he responded by saying anyone in need. And so we had to support the bereaved family so that they can send off their loved ones. In most African communities, and in particular among the Luya and the Luya communities in Kenya, burial in the cemetery or cremation or in a place other than their ancestral or matrimonial home is almost out of question. Even if someone died out of the country and it needed a lot of expenses for them to be brought back home, Imagine we would have to wait, even if it means having fundraisers for as long as it takes, but the body must be brought home for burial. There's a lot of trust, belief on how the dead respond when they are buried away from their home. This is African Mom's World. Come along with me as we travel across so many counties. Machakos, Nairobi, Kajado, Makweni, Taita Taveta, Mombasa, and finally Kilifi County to attend the burial of our neighbor Beatrice Wambani. Come along with me. If you are traveling to the coastal region, which is about 400 kilometers from Nairobi, that is about five hours, it is important to use the safest and most efficient means of transport. In this case, the standard gauge railway. We left home at exactly 6 p.m. because our departure time was scheduled for 8.30 a.m. In order to make it on time, we had to leave early. We managed to be on time and had our check-ins. Found so many people already had arrived. And when the train was leaving at 8.30, we were all seated. And for information purposes, there are two types of travel using the standard gauge railway, which is normally referred to as the SGR. There's the inter-county and there's the expressway. So these leave at different times. In our case, we use the inter-county one. We were to alight at Mariakani and not the final destination of SGR. So for us, this was the perfect one. So let's enjoy the scenery 
as we travel. This is Athi River. And as you can see at the town, floods have not spared them. Many houses have been submerged by the flooding that has taken place in the country. Actually, the river burst along this area, including the neighboring town of Kitengela. And it was so serious. Just look at how even the trees have still been submerged. People have deserted their homes for security purposes. And in places where it is very flat, it is even worse. The heavy rains have been quite destructive. And especially in areas which look like slum areas, it has been very difficult because the water just penetrated into the households. So this is an area where some irrigation takes place. But they were not spared either because there's a lot of stagnation of water even in the plantations. Trees were swept away and even some feeder roads were swept away. A lot of water along the river bank which spread to the neighboring villages, the neighboring houses. This was very destructive. In fact, I thought it's only where we stay, but in Kitengela, they were quite affected. So let's take a closer view on how Kitengela looks like. Apart from the flooding that took place, we realize that there is a lot of construction also taking place. A lot of storied buildings are coming up. Not sure whether they are industries, whether they are malls, but I can just see a lot of construction is taking place. So our first stop is at the Athi River Station. And just in case you didn't know, Athi River is a town in Kajado County. And Kitengela as well is a town in Kajado County. So this county is extremely big. It accommodates these big towns. So this is how the station looks like. And uh, we had a stopover of exactly two minutes. They are very efficient. When they announce two minutes, it's actually two minutes. It was just a pick, pick up of some of the passengers. And off we went. So I'll let you enjoy the scenery and the beauty along the way. Notice how the stations have been made. They are so elaborately done, very neat. And I think it's good to give credit where it is due. The Chinese actually did a good job. And even as we were talking about the construction that is ongoing around Kitengela town, I've just noticed that there is a lot of demolition that has taken place here. Actually, I was not aware, but I can see that there are so many houses that have been demolished around this area.
This place looks very nice. There is a lot of green scenery, despite them being shrubs. But you can also see maize plantations that have been destroyed. They were submerged in water. These floods have caused quite a lot of havoc. If you look on the far end, you can see that it's quite cloudy. Meaning that the rains are still with us. Look at the hills on the horizon. So many of them. They make the place look really nice. We are just approaching Emali. This is a very fertile area. And around this place, we have the Agricultural Demonstration Center, where most of the crops suitable for the eastern part of Kenya are grown. We have a lot of farms, mainly growing crops like maize and variety of vegetables, including cowpeas and African nightshade. We also have mbahazi, which is commonly eaten by the Kamba community, which live around this place. There are also tomatoes, but not leaving out the indigenous trees, a variety of them, making the place look really nice. As I had mentioned earlier, the most reliable mode of transport, I now agree or believe, is using the train. They had mentioned that we'd be at Emali Station at 9.27. It is actually 9.28 a.m. and we have just arrived at the station. Just like the other stations, it was very well done. The place looks so clean. I'm not sure about the inside, but from what I see from the outside, it was well done. We just had a test of China. So we continue with our journey. And from here, Emali, to the next station, which is Mutituande, we'll see a lot of these farms continuing. We have a lot of irrigation that is being done and we can see a lot of the demonstration farms still on this side of the road. We have arrived at Mtituande station. This is a very popular town, especially when we use the bus transport because most of the buses make a stop over here for people to take a break and also to eat their lunch on their way to and from the coast. And so we have done at least half of the journey and I'm feeling really tired. I decide to stand up and look through the window how the outside looks like at a closer range. And I notice these white flowers, so many white flowers and they look really good. They have covered most of the shrubs. They're extremely white. And I'm just wondering, are they really wild flowers or were they planted? Is there any other use? Just look at them. They look very nice. And then as we approach Voice Station, things change. 
the place doesn't look as green. It may have rained recently, but it's only the shrubs that you can see are still green. But the grass looks a bit dry. However, in the horizon, I can see so many hills. And there's a seasonal river here that doesn't look like it has a lot of water, which means it's been a while since it rained. Also notice the main road and see some cars on it. So it's like the railway and the main road are not far from each other. But this is quite a beautiful place as we approach Voice Station. At this point, I am so, so tired, but we are almost done with our journey. Can you imagine seated for four hours? At least I was able to get one hour standing, which made it lighter. But honestly, these chairs are not the best for traveling this long distance. Anyway, we are finally at our destination, which is Mariakani Station. We will not reach the end of the train journey, but this is where we alight and take car transport to our destination. So this is the second day, which is Saturday, and it is actually the burial day. There were so many people from all walks of life. The lady coming from Western Kenya, so we had people from Western part of Kenya, but there were also people who worked with both of them. We had people who followed up the children, where they work. We had neighbors, we had relatives, and even us neighbors. We had the political arm and there were so many speeches. I cannot say it was a good funeral, but generally there are many people who came to bid farewell to our neighbor. And one of the things that I took home from this burial is what the bereaved said. He said that in life, there is one day that you will have to quit. Whether it is at your work area, whether it was even the colonial people, colonial masters, they left. But even if it means staying for however long you'll stay on this earth, one day you will have to quit. So how prepared are you for quitting? That kept me thinking that as I live on this earth, this is not my final destination. One day I will have to quit.